What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at Artix Linux. Artix is another one of those Arch-based distributions. It's on a rolling release, but the main difference with Artix and Arch is that Artix does not use systemd as its init system. Artix offers pretty much every other modern alternative though for your init system. You can use runit, openrc, or s6 instead. And we have several different options for downloading Artix Linux. We can get one that's built with a desktop environment like Cinnamon, Mate, LXDE, or a couple of others. Or we can get a base installation and build everything else out ourselves like we would on Arch. And of course the options come with those three different versions, one with OpenRC, one with Runit, and one with S6. But for this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Artix LXDE OpenRC edition. So let's get started in VirtualBox by creating a new virtual machine. I'm gonna call mine Artix Linux, and you wanna make sure that the version is this generic Linux uh, 2.6 slash 3x slash 4x 64 bit. And I'm gonna set my RAM to four gigs. You could use less than this because it's a very lightweight distro. You know it's Arch based and on top of that, it's not using systemd. So you could easily get away with one or even two gigs of RAM. And we'll create a virtual hard disk. I'm gonna do VDI, fixed size so it's a little bit faster. And I'm gonna use 30 gigs of memory. So now let's go in and optimize our virtual machine settings real quick. I'm gonna use two processors. Again, not gonna be necessary for you to use two processors if you've got a lower spec machine. One processor is more than enough. We'll make the hard disk first priority so that we don't have to change that after we uh, install and do our reboot. Crank up our video memory to 128 megs and we're gonna do VBox VGA so that we can have a full screen. And of course, we gotta add our ISO into the disk. And we want this one here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start her up. And of course, it starts on the other screen. And we want to boot from the CD DVD ISO. Oh, I should probably change to full screen as well. <clears throat> Let's see, is full screen going to work inside of the live CD? Ah, it does, awesome. So after you boot in to the live CD, the first thing that I noticed was this documentation here on the desktop. And this is a really great move by the Artix Linux team because if I was to be installing this distro to hardware, especially if I was gonna be installing it on a laptop, then I might be doing the installation without internet since oftentimes you need drivers to get Wi-Fi working on Linux. So I think this documentation on the desktop is a great idea. I really wish that more Linux distribution would do this. Anyway, let's get started with the installation. Just click on the arrowhead icon here, and then we want to execute it. And this will welcome you to the Artix Linux rolling installer. And I'm gonna do American English. That's my favorite type of English and I'm gonna choose New York for my region, English US for my keyboard layout, and select your storage device. It should automatically be chosen if you've only got one hard drive, which since I have a virtual hard disk here, that's my only option. Check the um, radio button to erase the disk, and I'm not going to do swap. I would say that most people these days don't need swap. Um, typically, if you're using 16 gigs or more, swap is gonna be completely unnecessary. There's very few programs that actually use more RAM than that. And if you do find yourself going above 16 gigs of RAM, swap really isn't going to help you out that much. It's gonna severely impact your performance. At that point, you'd just be better um, getting more RAM in your system. <clears throat> 
Oh, and there's also an option to encrypt your hard drive here, but I'm not gonna do that since this is just a virtual machine. So then put in your name and it'll automatically fill in your username and your PC name based on the information that you give here. Choose a password and you get the option of logging in automatically without asking for the password. I don't like to do this. It's a, uh, you know, that's not good for security. So I don't like to get in the habit of doing that even in my virtual machines. And you can also use the same password for the administrator account. I really wish they would change this to root. Administrator is some, some Windows stuff. We don't do admins in Linux, we do root. Okay, so let's get started. This gives you a high level overview of the options you chose and let's install. And the installation is done. It seems like all the distros that don't use systemd install so quickly. I wonder if that's actually the reason or if it's just coincidence, but Arctic's Void and Alpine Linux, they all installed quickly. So let's check the box to restart now and reboot into Arctic Linux. Alrighty, so this is Artix Linux, and the first thing that I'm going to do is do some updates to the system because the base of this distro installed so quickly that I know it must have a lot of updates for it. Uh, Artix uses Pacman, just like Arch Linux, so we could just spawn a terminal and do sudo pacman syu, enter our root password. And that'll begin updating our system. So let's take a look at some of the utilities. On Artix, we have PCMan FM as our file manager. Personally, this is one of my favorite file managers. It's the same one that I'm using on Gentoo. It's a very fast, very lightweight file manager. Our default web browser is Midori, which is an open source, lightweight web browser based on WebKit rendering engine and the GTK3 interface. Midori is a good lightweight browser, not quite as feature rich as something like Brave or Firefox. And I did notice that certain things don't work on Midori. Like if we go to YouTube, and let's just click on a random video this one here. So HTML5 video doesn't work. Um, more bloated sites like YouTube, they're just not going to be able to deliver video to a Midori configuration. 
Uh, Midori also doesn't have Flash right out of the box, so any browser-based games or sites that really rely on Adobe Flash, they're not gonna work either. So let's take a look at some of our system preferences. Uh, here we go. Let's customize the look and feel, see if we can do any ricing on this uh, distribution. Oh, of course I want to proceed with the installation. So let's see what we have. So we have Arctic Dark. Okay, that's pretty much like right out of the gate, the same one that I would want to use. Color, this looks pretty good. Let's change our icon theme. I don't really like this one that much. Um, I don't like Edwita either. I kind of like this one. This almost looks like Windows in a way. I kind of do like the Windows aesthetic for a lot of things. Like Windows is sort of like, uh, it's sort of like a Lamborghini, right? Like on the outside, it looks really cool. It's a really sleek vehicle, but the maintenance on it is a pain in the ass and it ultimately is not a good investment. <laughs> I think that's pretty much how I feel about Windows. But yeah, I do like this uh, icon set more than the default one that comes on Artix. Let's see what other tools we have in our menu. Oh, we have MPV as our media player. That's really good. MPV is hands down the best media player that you can get on Linux, at least in my opinion. Some people may think otherwise, but MPV, it's minimal. It works with so many different file types. It's just one of my favorite ones to use. And there was also another one inside of here. Yeah, this one, LX Music. So what exactly is the difference between Oh, it looks like MPV didn't actually open. Um, okay, that's weird. Thought I clicked on it. All right, so what is actually the difference between MPV and LX Music? I'm not sure why Artix thinks we need two different media players. This seems pretty redundant, unless LX Music can actually do something that MPV can't. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any significant difference between um, LX Music or, well, not if there's any difference. I mean, obviously there's aesthetic differences, but is uh, LX Music capable of doing anything that MPV can't? Because if if they do the same thing, or if MPV has all of LX Music's features covered, I don't know why they would you know, waste a little bit of space by including redundant programs. All right, so everything is finished updating. Let's start doing some system footprinting. I always like to do that on a Linux distribution, see how minimalist it really is. And we don't have HTOP, so let's go ahead and install that everybody's favorite task manager. I did see that they have a different one down here. They have um, this one here, The uh, I think this is like an LX task manager or something like that, but like I said, everybody likes HTOP better. All right, so it looks like when we are idling, we're only using 240 megs of RAM. That's pretty good. I mean, considering that Windows 10, the most popular operating system in the world, uses 10 times more RAM than that when it's idling. Um, obviously, we can get a little bit lower on Linux distros if we were to be using a window manager, and especially if we were to compile everything from source instead of using a binary, we could get several times lower than this, but honestly, once you get below like 500 megs of RAM, you've already got a Linux system that's going to run on pretty much every computer out there. Even my first computer that I got when I was in middle school more than 10 years ago came with 512 megs of RAM. So this is good enough for memory usage. I'm also interested in footprinting, footprinting Midori as well, because this is supposed to be a very lightweight browser. So let's see just how lightweight it really is. Let's go ahead to google.com. All right, so we're using, 
and let's maximize it in case that makes any impact. All right, so right now with this, we are idling at 415 megs of RAM. Okay, let's install Firefox and see, is Midori indeed lighter than Firefox? I've got a feeling it will be. Um, okay, let's do a new window, sudo pacman s Firefox. And yeah, let's do mail cap. All right. So 415 was our usage on Midori. Let's go ahead and get Firefox running. All right, and we're using just under 600. It looks like it's settling in at 571. So yeah, Firefox is definitely a bit more bloated than Midori is. That's what happens when you cut out support for uh, Flash and HTML5 video. So this is Arctix Linux. For my high level review, I'm gonna give Arctix Linux a B plus. I like that it's Arch based. Arch is a great distro, very cutting edge, lots of packages and online support and documentation is available for it. I really like that Arctix dropped systemd support. It might be better for them to have a version of Arctix with systemd, although at that point I feel like you're just basically using Arch Linux anyway. But I'm not counting that against that them though for my rating because I personally don't use systemd. I think it's a very bloated init system and any distro these days that's going to have options for not system D. I think it's really brave and bold because if you look at the distros out there, something like 95% of them, maybe even more, have basically bowed their knee to system D. Like it's pretty hard to find a, um, a Linux distro without system D these days. And I like most of the default tools. I would prefer that they swapped out the default task manager with HTOP. And I still don't get what having two different media players is all about. I mean, does anybody even use two different media players for offline media? In my experience, MPV or VLC have been able to take care of everything I need. So if they're gonna double up on applications, I think it would be better for them to double up on the web browser because I'm sure Midori is fine for text-based websites and image boards, but the fact that video doesn't work in it means I probably wouldn't be using it as a daily driver anytime soon. I would have to use it with YouTube DL. And let's see, do they actually have YouTube DL installed? They do not. It should be available in the package manager though. Okay, so at least you could do that if you're gonna be using Artix. I guess you could get away with using um, Midori as your browser just as long as you use YouTube DL for any video you wanna watch and as long as you don't wanna play any um, browser-based games. Now, don't take this as some type of hate for the Midori browser because I looked into Midori and apparently it's a free software browser. So the lack of support for Flash and JavaScript is probably due to it being Libre and refusing to include non-free blobs like Firefox does to get that working. So within the context of a free software browser and the fact that Midori is about 150 megs lighter than Firefox, I think it is a good browser. I just don't get why Artix made it their default browser because Artix isn't a purely Libre Linux distribution anyway. It's not FSF approved, so I don't know why they would choose a less feature-rich Libre browser when that's arguably the most important package to an end user. But like I showed you, you could just install Firefox with Pac-Man. So at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit more work for the user to do after installation. Anyway, that's it for my installation and review of Artix Linux. Try it out on your system and let me know what you guys think.